Okay, so this is our new project car, a Mitsubishi L200. We've just bought this cheap on eBay. We paid £3,000 for this. Um, it all looks good. It's a nice spec one. It's got all the tricky mesh grills and all the fog lights on this front bumper. It's a diamond edition, barbarian. It's actually really highly spec. It's got the original alloys on it. Um, it looks pretty original. There's the old mark on the scuff on the door and stuff. You got the leather steering wheel. Whoop. We got the leather seats with the stitching on the seats. Um, what else it's got? It's got loads of stuff. It's got um, electric seats, heated seats. It's got sat nav, DVD. We got the electric sunroof in the top there, obviously, where sunroofs are. Um, got leather back seats. Um, we're really, it's auto, right? And this is where our problems start. This is why we got it cheap. Um, but let's have another look around. It's got all the stainless steel um, scuff plates. It's got the accessory light guards around the back. It's a little bit battered along the top of the tailgate. What's all this about, Ian? They said they want to get the, the non-fitting roll bar. I haven't worked that out. Yeah, that's a bit odd. It looks like it's off another car. We might swap that on the Nissan. I don't know. Um... But it's got the rear bar at the back there. And it always got all the little extra little knobbly bits, whatever they are. Um, and the stainless steel surround around the back. So it's this diamond edition, apparently. It has to be a diamond geezer to drive one of those, I reckon. So it's got mud flaps. It's got the stainless steel petrol cap. Anyway, right, let's have a look at the problem. So this video is really about this and this dodgy gearbox issue. So let's jump inside and have a look what's wrong with this gearbox. Okay, we've got lights in the doors, we've got everything going. He's a little bit battered and dirty. We'll give him a clean. Right, and then you're going to grab the camera. Right, um, so he starts up all right. Look at that, on the button. Right, we've got tunes going on. Right then, now the gearbox is gone. Now, and so at the moment you can see on the dash, you can see that, oh gosh, the all works as well. Look, we've got P we're in park. Now the problems apparently, when you put them in drive, that should go to a D, I think. I'm not even sure that it goes one, two, three. I've, maybe someone can tell me, but what happens if you go to drive in this one, the D's flashing, right? And we've got the engine management light on here. And this is telling us we've got some gearbox problems. So let me just pull forward a little bit here, because I'm, I'm a bit... Now we're stuck in a gear, basically. The problem we got here, we and he's a bit. We got the van behind us. How are we doing? Yeah. So the reverse is all right. It pulls away in reverse, all right. There you go. Mm -hmm. We could drive it backwards everywhere, Ian. Huh? That might be a good idea. Might be a good idea. How good are you at driving backwards? Uh, not good enough for that, I don't think. Right. Turn the, turn the rear diff up, the rear axle upside down, then at least you better drive it. So that, that all is all fine. Right, but when we drive forward... Ooh. Right, so we'll select drive. It basically pulls away in... I'm not sure if it's third or fourth gear, but it's a very high gear. And what I was doing when I was driving it, it would get up to about 70. But if you're at 3,000 rev, you were doing 60. If you're at 4,000, you're doing 80. So whatever, whatever gear that is. So it, if you go to pull away, it's like, uh, I think the torque converter's slipping. But, but basically there's no gear change. It's just, it's stuck in the gear. And even if you try and force it in second, it's still in the same gear or force it in low. But it is showing me low here. But it's flashing and unhappy. The so revs it, doesn't seem to be any different, though. No, it's it, it, it's basically just stuck in one gear. Um, so we're going up to our local friendly garage to nick their Snap-on diagnostics and see what um, see what it reckons is wrong with this thing. Right. So they've let me borrow their tester. So this is the ODB2 connector. I'm going to dive under here. Ian reckons it's under here. I might do that. Why am I doing the dirty stuff today? You just seem to volunteer yourself for it, to be honest. Right, here we go. Right, Oof. right. Let's see. Actually, I'm going to swap it because Ian's always. Oh, people telling me let Ian do the tech stuff. He's better at it. God, I don't know. 
Um, scanner. Yes, yeah, tilt the screen this way because I've got the sun, that's it. Hey. Where are we looking? Mitsubishi, MG, oh, Mini, Mitsubishi, there we go. Oh, where's the key? Uh, yeah, I might have to have the ignition on. I've got the ignition on ready for you. Ah, oh, there you go. Oh, step ahead. Tip it this way a little bit more. That's the... Oh, mate, 2007 L200. Mm. Right. Code scan. Code scan. Engine's off, yep. Engine code zero, look at that. So we're on transmission, solenoid stuck off, DCC solenoid, input shaft speed sensor. Oh, now that's an interesting. So there's our three, three for the transmission. Is that, oh, there's a, there's a scroll down, but oh, we got, we got more than a few. So what have we got there, DCC17, solenoid, yep. If you, you scroll down here, then you can look them up on the internet later. You can get them on, if I can get them on there, look. ECU timer, end. We'll clear all of these, reread it, and see what's still... Yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah, that was, yeah, let's take it for a drive again. That's a good idea. Let's have a good, yeah. All right, so what are you doing now then? Yeah, so can you clear those then? So we've got all those on video anyway. All right, go back. Clear all codes. Engine, transmission, anti lock brakes. Now, one thing that some people are saying is it could be the the loom. We could be lucky, and it could just be apparently where they clamp the loom to the gearbox, it can sort of chaff or chafe or vibrate or whatever, and, and some of the wires can. So later we're going to get underneath and have a look, but let's just see what happens. First, we'd be dead lucky if that was the case. If we bought a cheap truck and it was just the wiring now. Stranger things have happened, haven't they? They have. So we'll read it again. But we shouldn't get anything from because there's we no systems it. turned on. Ah! Oh. Camera shot, I missed the cob. There we go. Three transmission faults. Okay, so they are permanent. Input shaft speed sensor. None on the anti-lock brakes, none on anything else. Well, so so they're, they're, they're the only permanent ones. Permanent ones. DCC. What, what do you reckon DCC is? Something clutch. So we'll, we'll have a look. We've got the we'll codes there. We'll have to there. do some searching, I think. So, so, we'll, so we've got some codes, so that'll give us something to look at. So that's where we're up to. Right, so I'm under the car. So there's the front of the car. The front wheels are here. And as you come back... You can see the wiring's alongside the gearbox here. Let me point it out. I've got it on some super wide angles, so it's a bit freaky. So there you go. It comes along here. It comes along here. Now, a lot of people are saying that where it comes... Because this is attached to the body, and this is attached to the engine. And it, it is susceptible to damage, because that's the clip that... That's the first clip that holds it there. And actually, if you look on this one, you can see that, that, that there is some black here where it has sort of chaffed through um, the sort of armoured cable. So I am going to just open this up before I um, start taking the sump off and changing the valves. I'm just going to open this sheath and just see that the wires in it are okay. Because it's where it goes from, from fixed to the body to vibrating as the engine and that vibrates. Um, this could be the culprit. Um, some people say they've put new gearboxes in and it hasn't been any better and that's been the reason. But failing that, failing being lucky, we're then going to come underneath. I'll get it up on the ramps and we're going to drop the sump off the uh, gearbox here. But let's do this bit first. So I've just taken, loosen the harness off as you can see here. And, and where that support clip is, it is, it is quite remarkable. I've never seen anything like it. Um, the wire, the, the sort of, the wire, the... The, the the bit that's yellow, isn't it? the insulation on the wire has actually become ribbed here. You can see it where it's it's rubbed against this ribbed sort of sleeving because obviously the sleeving's supposed to the wires are supposed to be inside it. I've pulled them out because the sleeving's a split sleeving. It's got a, an open bit there, and it has absolutely it's worn through the insulation here, and it, it's actually ribbed. I don't know if you can see. I've tried to get as close as I can. So I'm just going to get rid of these extra bits of tape here. And have a look what the what the wires like underneath. But it could well be a cause of some 
some problems. Nothing to do with the gearbox at all. So I'm not convinced this is my problem. But um, it isn't good and it certainly needs some, some attention. Um, so yeah, let me have a look at this a bit more. Let me take that bit off there. Um, and then, yeah, these wires, are, all of them have got this little um, very distinctive ribbed rib bit to it. You can see there, you can see how ribbed it is. Right, let's have a look, see if, if they still act as wires. Okay, so we've we've snipped a bit of wire out of that, and as I rotate it there, can you see how ribbed that is along the bottom? Uh, and that's just where the it's and it, it's gone. It's hard to see in this light. Um, it, it's sort of gone green. You might be able to see that there. You see how it should be yellow. And actually, if we put the multimeter on it and test it, you got the oh, you, Ian's got the you got the trick gear going on here. Yeah. Right. So he's got that in there. So just demonstrate that touch the wires, if you touch the wires together, it should give us a, a zero resistance. And an audible. All right. So we've got... That wire is not a wire. No. So we might... If I go in the middle there and join that end, <laughs> that one's all right, not there. There you go. Yeah, so, so there is that. You can identify so, where so the break is. from there to the middle is okay, but from there to there is... So we are going to solder a new bit of wire into the underside of our gearbox and we might do we need to check some more of them well that one's the worst one um but yeah let me go and check but that one is if, if there's any visibly notched i'm gonna i'm gonna take them out um replace them but let's have a look the pl the mystery continues so we've replaced a bit of wire we haven't tidied it up we've soldered in a bit of wire now we've started it up we've got and we have got a solid oh yes you are you go into D, you can you, you get a solid it, D. It? Let's have a look. He picks up alright. He picks up alright. I don't know what it was like to drive the other day. Oh, it was like pulling out in. So we'll go and put it back on the snap on. But one wire fixes a Mitsubishi L200. Brakes are squaring. That's chain your gear, isn't it? Put it in, put it in like second, and put it in. Does that tell you? That tells you two now. We never had that before. Well, I think we fixed it. Let's plug it in and have a look. Plug it we? in. We'll just double check with the diagnostics. We're going to our local friendly garage because he's got the diagnostics machine. But I think we fixed an automatic gearbox on a Mitsubishi L200 with a 10p bit of wire, well it didn't 10p was it, a bit of soldering and 10 minutes of work. Yep, let's plug yep. it in. Yeah, let's have a go. Bit code zero, I think that's where they were last time, wasn't it? Air conditioner one. Oh. Air outlet damper. Oh. The air, air outlet damper potentiometer high. Electronic, that's cleared them all, huh? Air conditioning. Air conditioning. Not so we've cleared it all. So clear the. We know, we're still we're 61% oh. detecting oh. the airbags. I think it's got to do the interior circuits now. You reckon it was on anti lock brakes before? I can't remember. I think it, was, it does transmission and then anti lock brakes. brakes. It was okay. one of those two. Cruise control. That's not bringing anything up. Immobilizers. Not and we, and we haven't got up. the engine management light on as well, have we? Because that was on before. Uh, we did have it driving down here. Did we just now? Just this yeah, second? Yeah, just yeah. driving down here now yeah. we had it on. Here we go back. 
clear all codes. Alright, oh, system detected. So it all looks okay, doesn't it? Alright, and code scan again. Right. Oh, we've still got three on there. I might have to try that process again now. Oh, did they you didn't come up with those? Picked, picked them up. Them up. DCC solenoid, yeah, that's interesting. Isn't it? Yeah, it comes up underneath transmission, so we'll try, we'll try clearing them again and see if it. Now it's found them I'm for here. some reason. All right, so for some reason we've had to do this twice, but um, so we, we've cleared them and we're rescanning, and that all looks good. So yeah, we had the transmission codes come up, and now they're they're cleared. Yeah. So if we, all right, well, well, I'm looking for that engine management light going out now. We've still got an engine management light on there, haven't we? So we still need, we've still got something in there. What is that? Put the ignition on again. So we've done two ignition cycles, so I think when you use the, the snap-on scanner, it clears the codes, but for some reason, we, we had to do a couple of ignition cycles. So as long as you've cleared your codes and everything's good on that, I don't think you've got a problem. So I think we're all fixed, done, dandy. If you've got a transmission issue, the first place to Flash check... Flashing D. First place to check is those wires. Wires, where... Box. Yeah. So it's where the loom goes from the body onto the gearbox, which is vibrating, where it joins, that's the stress point. And you can see in the video clearly there, that's what happened. We fixed the car for no money. We've got ourselves a bargain here. Um, yeah, um, I'll do a walk around the car in another video and show you what, what we got for the money, which is awesome. I'm feeling bad. But there you go, that's the way it works. Um, hopefully this will save you guys some money and then I'll feel better. Good luck with that.